Welcome to the video version of CS61A lecture number one. The very first video of the very first lecture of our spring 2018 offering of the course. Videos like this one will be released before each lecture and they will cover all of the content that's covered in live lecture. There are a lot of students that enroll in this course, currently about 1,350. That number far exceeds the number of seats in the lecture hall and providing these videos is one of the ways that we manage that very large enrollment. Instead of coming to live lecture, you might choose to watch these videos instead. And if you do so, since they're released before live lecture, you won't be behind and I also guarantee that they will cover all of the important material. So you won't miss anything by watching the videos instead of coming to live lecture. Live lecture is a fine way to teach somebody something, but it's not perfect. Sometimes it's too fast, sometimes too slow. Sometimes you'll think about something for a moment and miss something that was said and then you'll be lost for the rest of the lecture. Videos are superior in that you can speed them up, slow them down, pause, rewind, and generally have better control over your viewing experience of the lecture material. Since videos are so great, you might think that everybody watches them and nobody comes to live lecture. Well, that's not true. Historically, maybe 70 or 80 percent of students decide to watch mostly videos, but they come to live lecture on occasion just to remember what it's like. And the rest of the students come to live lecture because they prefer that experience. It's totally up to you. What I suggest is that you come to the first lecture, maybe the first few, decide if you like that, watch some videos as well, and then make a decision about how you're going to watch the lecture material. You could even watch live sometimes and watch on video other times. That's totally fine. If you've decided that you're going to go to live lecture, or if you've already been to live lecture, there's nothing new in the rest of the videos. You can stop watching now and pick up with lecture two. You're still here? Well, then you must be interested in watching the video version of lecture number one. Let's get started. Welcome to CS61A. This is a first course for majors in computer science, but many people who are not majors take it as well, and that's totally fine. My name is John Taniro. I was not a computer science major, but I did study computer science at graduate school here at Berkeley. Then I went to Google to work on Google Translate for a while, and then a few years ago, I came back to Berkeley in order to teach this course and similar courses. You can reach me at denero at berkeley.edu or come to my office hours, which start next week. I'll hold office hours on Wednesdays from 10 to 11 and Thursdays from 10 to 11. Wednesdays will just be me. Thursdays I'll have a special guest, my dog Samosa. If you like dogs, come on Thursday. If you don't like dogs, come on Wednesday. You can also make individual appointments with me, denero.org slash meet.html. I think there are no appointments available at this very moment, but I'll post some later this afternoon. You don't always have to reach out to me directly. The fastest way is to get answers about this course is to post on Piazza, the course forum. That way any member of the staff can answer. If they think I need to answer, then they can tag me and I'll make sure that I respond as soon as possible. There's also an email address that contacts both me and several heads of staff uh, if you want to reach more than just me but you have sort of an administrative question, you can try cs61a at berkeley.edu. I teach this class, but I don't teach it alone. It requires a lot of staff in order to run a course this size. We'll have 44 teaching assistants here at Berkeley. Those are known as undergraduate graduate student instructors. They teach lab and discussion section. They hold drop-in office hours, and those will actually start this week, and they'll do lots of other stuff help me maintain the website, develop assignments, grade exams, etc. In addition, there will be 50 plus mentors on the staff. You'll meet them in a couple of weeks. They teach mentoring sections, which no one is enrolled in yet. Those are offered starting in week three or four as small group sections, just three or four students and a mentor in order to give you more chance to review the material with a member from the course staff. They'll also help hold drop-in office hours and lots of other stuff. Homework parties, mastery sections, all of that will announce when it's relevant. 
And finally, we'll have 250 academic interns that will help out in lab and office hours to answer your question. These folks just took 61A recently and they decided to come back and help participate in the teaching process. So they don't run sections, but they're there to help uh, answer your questions in case the TA or the mentor is busy. And finally, your most important resource is your fellow students. Please take advantage of this wonderful community we have here at Berkeley and work with other people while you're here. Here's how the course works. There's lectures. I really recommend that you don't fall behind in lecture, even if you have a lot of work. Never fall more than a day behind or everything gets more confusing. The videos will be posted to cs621a.org before each live lecture. Typically, I post them right before, like 20 minutes before, um, but at least you'll be 20 minutes ahead of the people who go to live lecture. Lab section is probably the most important part of the course. That will start next week, and this is where you actually perform the active programming. That's a lot of what this course is about, and so you need to practice. You practice in lab, you have people there who can answer your questions if you get stuck or something comes to mind. We'll also have a discussion section starting this week. That's the most important part of this course. It's where you put down your computer for a little while and just think about the kinds of problems that arise in computer science and how to solve them. The first discussion section this week is an important opportunity for you to get to know your peers. Uh, you won't have a lot of technical material because we're only going to do the first lecture today, uh, but you'll have a chance to get to know your TA and learn what the course is about in some more detail. And we'll have office hours held by the staff. Now you can come to my office hours, there's two of those a week, but then we'll also have 20 hours of staff office hours every week starting next week where you can come and ask individual questions. So if you ever get stuck, know that you're not alone in this course. You can always go get help uh, from a course staff member just by coming to drop in office hours. You'll find a schedule on the course website. There's also an online textbook. Some people like reading it before lecture. Sometimes people like to read it afterwards. Uh, some people don't read it at all, but that I don't recommend because the people who do read it tell me that it's quite helpful. We'll also have weekly homework assignments, two midterms and a final, four programming projects, and all of these will be posted along with information about them to cs61a.org, the course website. So make sure you check there if you're ever looking for something that has the assignment links and the due dates and everything else. And what you'll see is that there's quite a lot of work in this class. But we're also going to try to provide uh, enough special events and office hours and support that you can make it through all of the work. So we don't want people to become overwhelmed or fall behind, but instead to get the practice that's required to become good at computer science by completing all of this work in a timely manner according to the schedule that we've worked out. You don't have to do it alone. You're welcome to come seek help from the community, but that requires you to take initiative. So please don't fall behind. I know I said that before, but I'll say it again. I'll probably say it a few more times before this course is over. And please seek help when you need it. There's nothing wrong with needing help. That's why we're in a university, so that we can help each other learn.